Let's go into all the world. Salvation now is for everyone, whoever believes. Right. What he's doing is called eisegesis, right? Yes. Eisegesis is when you take out, you take an interpretation that doesn't exist in the text, and then he is applying it to the text. Unfortunately, that doesn't exist, my brother. We are bringing out an interpretation that no longer exists in the text. I'm saying, Jesus said, I was only sent to the children of Israel. That's what he said. I was only sent. Only. What does only mean, my friend? Only means one and only. There is no other possibility where Jesus could have been sent to, I don't know, the Japanese or the Chinese or the, the English, the European. Unfortunately, you're, you're, you're committing a heresy or fallacy of eisegesis. You're not actually proving to me it's that Jesus was sent to the whole entire nation. You're just basically, you're, 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 you're quoting a verse that contradicts Matthew chapter 10 verse 5. Jesus commanded his disciples, he says, do not go. This is a direct commandment. Why would Jesus make that commandment if later on you're, you're arguing that Jesus said, oh, okay, well, my message is now for the wider, the wider community or the wider world, so to speak. So again, my friend, you need to prove to me that Jesus said I was sent to the whole world and then maybe we can have that discussion but if you're just gonna say to me well you know Jesus said well go in and you know baptizing them in the name of the Father the Son this is not really evidence my friend you have to produce something which is concrete quite you know and not open up to ambiguity you have to you know if you can provide a verse great I mean if you can't then okay <laughs> so anyway uh, first of all I don't have to prove anything to you or anybody so else. What's the point? That's the first thing. What's the point? That's the first thing. What's the point? No point. The reason being is that I'm not in your dark. I don't have to prove anything to you. No, but brother, it's, it's good. Hold on, hold on. Let me okay, let me finish. I would like to okay, learn. Let me finish. Oh, oh, okay. I want to hear this so out. I have to see okay. the evidence. So I don't have to prove anything. When anyone says, you have to do this and you have to do that, I don't have to do anything. So I don't have to do anything. Well, fair enough. Anyway. But I just so want anyway. to have anyway. a Good. So okay, anyway, well, as I said, as I said, Let's read the end of the gospel. Line, line belief, it, it? it sounds like that, but I, I, I want to hear this Let's read the end of the gospel. It, just, it seems line, a bit... Line, which gospel are you reading now, brother? Which one is this? Yeah. What's the, this end of Matthew. Let's Let's read Matthew. the end of Matthew. The end of Matthew. Right at the very end. Okay. After Jesus is resurrected. You can read it with me if you like, so I'm not lying. No, I, I believe okay. you. Go on. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. You know what all nations means? All people. Thank you. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all teachings whatsoever I commanded you and lo, I am with you always even unto the end of the world What verse is that bro? All nations What it, verse is that? All nations are there huh? This what is Matthew is Matthew Matthew, Matthew 28 20. Verse 19 and 20. Well, right, let's, let's see what right, the Bible's going to say. Hold on one second. There's wait, as I said, I've already given you the two. Hang on, are you, hang on, are you finished? No, no, hold on. No, okay. let, let yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, no, go for it. Earlier, Jesus told, in one of the Gospels, Jesus tells a parable. He tells a parable how <clears throat> an owner of a vineyard mm. and he rents it out. Okay. And the workers of the vineyard take over in the, in the vineyard and the owner is a faraway land. He sends servants to the vineyard. He sends servants to the vineyard. Yeah. And they, 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 miss, they miss the trip, they miss, they mistreat the servants that go from the owner to the in the faraway land. Right. And then, he sends more servants and they mistreat them. Finally, he sends his own son. This is a parable that Jesus tells. Right. Tells. He sends his own son. He, he's, the owner of the vineyard says, okay, they disrespected my servants, but surely they will respect my son. So he sends his son, and when he said they get to the vineyard, the workers in the vineyard say, this is the son, this yeah. is the heir. If we kill him, uh, then it will belong to us. I get you. And he told this to the Jewish hierarchy. The Jewish hierarchy were angry at him because they knew that he was talking about them. It was a parable. It was okay. a parable. I get you. So, that's a parable of God sending prophets. Just like in the Old Testament, God sent prophets and many times the Jewish people killed the prophets, killed their own prophets. Yeah, I believe that. They rejected it. I believe they rejected that. it. Yeah. So Jesus was there. And so now we come to the point in the story where like the whole, he's sending his own son. Right. And so. they're angry with Jesus. So Jesus came to his own first, fulfilling that prophecy in the Old Testament. He came to his own. Salvation is of the Jews. He came to his own first. So when you go and read, rightfully say, go to the children of Israel. Don't go, right, to, the way, don't go to the way of the Gentiles. Absolutely right. right. But then they came to the point where they rejected him. And they falsely accused him. And they sent him to the Romans. Mm. And he was beaten. 
and he was tortured and it is his flesh ripped out of his back he had a hood put over his head and beaten by Roman soldiers then and stripped naked and then finally he's put on the cross and he dies on the cross third day he rises again and comes back to life right now we're saying now I fulfilled that yeah now we're saying to his disciples the prophecy is still there he came to his own but his own received him not now he says go into what was the phrase that he used at the end of Matthew? All nations. All nations, thank you. Thank you. Right, okay. So, as I said before, right, what he's doing is something called eisegesis. He's not doing exegesis. Exegesis is when you are providing evidence that exists in the text to support his statement. He's doing something called eisegesis, where he's providing evidence that falls outside the text that doesn't exist into the text. I've given you a direct evidence, a quote from Jesus himself. Now, the verse that you provided contradicts my verse, right? In Matthew chapter 10, I, I heard the context, but let's discuss the context, right? Right, so Jesus said, these 12 Jesus sent forth and charged them, say, go not in unto the way of the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? The people that work. The non-Jews, like myself, like you, my friend. We are all non-Jews. So Jesus said to his disciples, do not go in unto the way of the Gentiles. He said, but, so Jesus makes an exception to the rule. He says, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, cast out demons, etc. So Jesus' commandment was quite categorically. He says, do not go in unto the way of the Gentiles. Now, the verse that he brought, which I believe is Matthew 28, is that, is that right? Right, so he brought a Matthew 28. Sorry, what does it say? Matthew 28? Okay, I've read it out. Okay. Says, go, yeah. go, it says, go to all nations. Right, go into all nations, yeah. So when Jesus says, go into all nations, all nations it has to it has to be consistent with the verses that I have read otherwise the two verses will seem to contradict each other if one verse says go in unto all the nations and that means outside of Israel then that will contradict Matthew chapter 10 verse 5 which I read here it would also contradict Matthew chapter 15 verse 24 now I understand that you try to bring up some type of explanation the explanation that this <laughs> this brother gave here the explanation that this yeah, brother gave here is is an explanation that doesn't even exist into the text he just with all due respect, but I think you just made that up personally. Did I just think, up or did you read it? I, I, no, I, no, I've got to agree. You, no, I read it. No, no, thank you. Thank you. No, hold on a minute. Thank you. The reason why I believe you made that verse up, not, not the verse, but the reason why I believe that explanation you made up is because the verse, the, the explanation doesn't fall within the text. I want something that's consistent with the text. So I'm being more consistent than you. I'm saying Matthew chapter 28 means that when Jesus said to the 12 tribes of Israel, go in unto the 12, it means the 12 tribes of Israel. So Jesus' message was within, it has to be within the confines of Israel. So the nations were the 12 tribes. The nations <laughs> is the 12 tribes of all Israel. All nations? All nations. What is all nations? Hold on a minute. All nations has to be the 12 tribes of Israel. And why is this? Maybe you might ask the reason why, and I think you should ask why. The reason why I'm saying that the, the, all, when Jesus said, Proclaim to all the nations, right? Otherwise, it will conflict with Matthew 15 verse 24. Jesus said, I was only. What does only mean? For example, if I said, this is the only phone I have in my hand, right? It's impossible for me to, to have another phone unless I'm a liar, unless I'm a pathological liar. So the point I'm trying to raise here yeah, with please, you, my friend. Please, yeah, get to the point. Yeah. You don't need to rush me. Get to the point. No, I think, I, I think the point he's making is it's the 12 I, tribes. I, I, is that the point you're making? All nations are the 12 tribes. Is that the point? No, 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 hold on. One second. One second. One second. That's complete nonsense. With all due respect. It's all With all due respect. Yeah. But when you Wrap were talking, I did not interrupt once. I was, I was. I didn't I was, talk as long I as was, you. I was patient. So let's go. I, you was. Let's go. You was. I was patient with no, you. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. So, so I, I think you should, you should, you should reciprocate the same respect back. So what I'm saying to you, right, is that Jesus said I was only sent to the lost, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Unfortunately, you're bringing up something that con contradicts this, right? But I would like to get into something else with you. Oh, no, no, wait, wait, no, no. Okay, no, 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 no,
on Tuesday you were driving to Hampstead and on Wednesday you were driving to Chelsea. This is the point here. He said, within the context, like I said, of the prophecy, he came to his own, his own received him not, therefore go into all nations. I explained the whole context, how he came to his own, they rejected him, so then he tells his disciples, yeah. mainly Jewish people, now he says, go into all the world. Whoever believes will be saved. Can I ask you a question, just based on that? Um, when Jesus came, he said, he's not come to start a new law. He's come to fulfill the old law. He's not come with any new rules or regulations. He's come to, 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 to fulfill come to the destroy old law. The law. He came to fulfill, to the, fulfill law. the law. Yes, indeed. But then also, what it kind of coincides with what he's saying, because he's saying he's only come, salvation is only for the Jews. So if that was the case then, and he's not come with anything new now, then what he's saying in regards to the 12 tribes would make all the sense then in the world. Yeah, no, I, I like to make an all addition. All nations means all nations. Uh, no, even no, you doesn't. Know, you know no, it doesn't. No, but it's not a new law Jesus has come with. It it's only it, salvation is for the Jews. It doesn't say go into all the 12... 12 tribes of Israel. I know that. No, I respect that. that. He says all nations. That's correct. But, but let me let me respond to what you said there. Yeah. So the whole thing about Jesus fulfilling the law. He said, I've not come to destroy the law. Yeah. The whole Levitical law, the Ten Commandments, I've not come to destroy that. I've come to fulfill it. Yeah. Jesus is the only one who could fulfill it. Okay. He's the only one who could score straight A star in every aspect of the law. Nobody else, everybody else fails. David failed, Moses failed. Everybody fails. Only Jesus has fulfilled the law and he's, and he's scored all the same text. All ticks and all the same boxes. So Jesus is the perfect sacrifice. So he came not to destroy it, but he came to, to fulfill, fulfill it. it. Okay? okay? That's the old, that's under the old covenant. In Jeremiah, it says that God himself is going to bring, bring in a new covenant. It's not going to be like the old covenant when I brought your forefathers out of the land of Egypt. I'm going to bring in a new covenant. Do you want me to read it to you? or? Do you... So what's that, the equivalent of a new law? The covenant, a new, is that a new, new covenant, law? a new contract. A new, oh, so, okay. so, so, so Jesus has fulfilled, he hasn't destroyed it, he's fulfilled it. But he, now he's coming with something new. He's coming with a new contract. It's a new, have you ever worked with anybody? Yeah, of course. Under a contract? Yeah. When that contract comes to an end, you either renew the contract or you go and work with somebody else, yes? Or stay with the old one if I'm happy. Yeah, you either renew the contract. Yeah, renew yeah, the contract. yeah, that's correct. Okay, yeah. so Jesus is bringing a new covenant. Just before he went, just before he was crucified, at the Last Supper, you know the Last Supper when... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, this is the new covenant in my blood. This is the new covenant. This is it. I'll read it to you first. The old, the, the old, no, let, me, let me hear his proof first. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm going to show it to you. Just so that people don't say I'm making it. No, up. I don't believe it, but it's, evidence is always great. Yeah, let's show it. Read it. I don't. I don't want anyone to just take my word for it. Just like I won't take anybody's word for them. So this is the Old Testament in Jeremiah 31, 31. Yeah. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with them. When I took their, fa when I took their fathers in the day, I took their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand and brought them out of the land of Egypt. Which my covenant, they broke. God didn't break it, they broke it. Okay? My covenant, they break. Sorry, David. I don't Although have, do you have any I was a husband today. This lady was so wonderful. Metaphorically speaking, God was a husband. Metaphorically, he was he was married. The children of Israel were married to God, to the real God. Metaphorically speaking, okay, it's like a marriage covenant. I was married to you, and you broke the covenant. So you know what? Through the prophet Jeremiah, I'm going to bring in a new covenant. Was this according? Was this for Moses? This was is it from Jeremiah? No, I understand that, but was that, was that, they're talking about bringing the people out of the land of Egypt? Yes, yes, yes. So was that, was that for Moses? That's Moses. When, 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 Not I Jesus, brought, that's for Moses then? No, no, it says that. When I brought them out of the land, when I brought Moses and the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Which is for Moses, that was Moses' time and he done that. Jesus didn't bring anyone out of no, Egypt. No, no, I know that. Yeah. Okay, that was then. He said, my point is this, I'm going to bring in a new covenant. This is what God says. I understand that. Right, okay. 
But what, 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 what I'm saying, brother, what I'm saying is... Can I just respond to some of these, these points? Sorry. All right, so, on. you know, okay. So, are you finished? Hang on, are you finished? I'm going to show you in the New Testament where Jesus said... Are going to change the covenant? This is... This well, well, is we kind of passed... Well, yeah, we're, we're on that topic now. You weren't listening. This is the New Covenant. Uh, he mentioned a few Jesus things that I just want to just... Br- I, he mentioned blood. a few things... Right, let me just finish reading this one bit. and then Sorry, I just wanted to... I just want to give everyone a fair shot. You know what I mean? I don't want to be biased or nothing like that. Go for it. Sorry? Matthew 1, what does that say? That's what God, Dr. Jesus. Was that about the covenant? Yeah. Matthew 1, 22. Yeah. No, no, it's not. It's not. Is that in the, what, in the first chapter of Matthew? Matthew 1, 22. Matthew 1, 22. The new covenant. When I'm saying about Jesus. Prophecy, what was in the Old Testament? Yeah. No, but we're talking, like, he's talking about a new covenant this time. Okay. A, a new covenant after the old law. The Last Supper, that's what he's talking about. Last Supper. At the Last talking. Supper. At the Last Supper, Jesus said, This is the new covenant in my blood. You want to look at it? Do a search for that. New, Jesus, new covenant in my blood. This girl going on behind us, yeah? They're, they're, I've made you there in the spirit. I don't know what that means. You know what I mean? I don't know. Do you know what? Why he's searching for it? Maybe I'd like to just respond to some points here. Fair? Okay, all right. Do right. you mind if he just... Res- no problem, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. So, what do we see here? Jesus, Jesus always speaks about following the commandments of God, right? Jesus always stipulates about the following the commandments of God. Sorry, oh, right? oh, not, not once did Jesus say that oh, it, it, for you to receive um, eternal life, you, I, you have to believe in my death and my resurrection. Not once did Jesus say this, and I'm open up to I'm open up for correction if this is the case. But according to Jesus' own words, this is what he says, right? This is how you receive salvation according to Jesus' word, right? Jesus said, bear with me. And behold, one came to him and said, Teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So what is eternal life here that Jesus is speaking, that this man is speaking Sa- about? Salvation. He's speaking yeah. about salvation, uh, that, that you know, um, he's, I'm just gonna check his way Jesus how to said, get into paradise. This is covenant in my blood. Oh yeah, that's oh, where it goes. Sorry, last, what, what are you? Last, cut you no, no, it's okay. Sorry, 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 apologies, apologies. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. At the last chapter. I'll find it, I'll find it. Yeah. I'll find it. Right. So, okay, I'll, I'll just Go start on. again. Right, so the question is, right, how do we get, how do we receive eternal life according to Jesus' own word? Now, Jesus did not say at any point during Mark, Matthew, Luke and John or in his ministry, the only way to, 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 to render or to receive eternal life or to get to paradise is by believing in my death and resurrection. And I am open up to correction if I'm wrong in this. But according to Jesus, Jesus' own words, he said this, and behold, one came to him and said, Teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So this man is questioning Jesus, how do I get to paradise? How do I receive eternal life? How do I receive salvation? Mm. Correct? Yeah, that's right. And he said unto him, Why art thou me concerning that which is good? One there is who is good, but if thou wouldst enter into eternal life, keep the commandments. Right? He said unto him, which and thou Jesus said thou shalt not kill thou shalt not commit adultery thou shalt not steal thou shalt not bear false testimony on all sorry, man. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, it didn't hit me it didn't hit me it's fine. I'll hold it. thou shalt not bear false witness honor thy father honor thy mother and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself and the young man said unto him all these things I have observed what lack what lack I yet right Jesus said unto him what lack yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wouldst be perfect, go and sell which thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. So according to Jesus, this is how you retain eternal life. This is how you get eternal life, by following the commandments of God. Right? Now, also, I'd like to point another verse. We're coming back to the new covenant. We're coming back to yeah, the Yeah, new. yeah, no problem. Right. Yeah, yeah, I've got you. Another just a verse I want to point to you is that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 verse 17 and 20. So the first thing that we can learn here from the previous verse that I've quoted, right? 
Yeah, no, I can't, I can't speak now. I'll speak to you in a minute, yeah? Right. Right. So what can we learn from the first verse that I read, right? Is that to attain eternal life, to attain paradise, to attain that salvation that you want, my brother, right? Is that you have to follow what? The commandments of God. The man questioned Jesus and he said to him, I've done all these things. I haven't bear false witness. I haven't committed adultery. So what is it that I am lacking at this point? And what did Jesus reply? He said, you know, go and sell your garments and follow me, right? So according to Jesus, did Jesus say, well, you know what? To attain eternal life, you have to believe in my death. To attain eternal life, you have to believe that I am God. No, he didn't say this. The, the, uh, the, the instruction was simple. One more point and then you can respond. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, verse 20, he said, Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy it, but to fulfill. This is what the brother was saying here. Mm. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not, not one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law till it all be fulfilled. Now, Jesus makes a warning to the Christians. He says, Whoever therefore shall break one of these least of commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever shall do un and whoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So there's two things we can learn here. From the first verse, Jesus says to the man, keep the commandments because this is how you attain eternal life. Right? And the second point here is that in order to attain eternal life, you have to what, keep the commandments. Mm. And if you break the commandments of God, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, now, so I will. Okay. I have one more point. Just one, hold on, hold on. one more point. I will charge you. <laughs> okay, I am listening. No, he's listening. He's listening. I will charge you as a Christian that you have broken the first commandment because Christians worship Jesus as God. And that is my argument against you as a Christian because you believe Jesus is God and I believe that you've broken that commandment. Go ahead. Let's deal with that. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's getting a bit hype over there. I think we should just ignore it. Need to get Eddie Hearn in there. But uh, yeah. When Jesus. Yeah. At the, at the last supper. Yeah. At the last. At, yeah. At the last. What's this, Jeremiah? No, 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 no. Something else. I've already read Jeremiah. Oh yeah, yeah. This is. Yeah. I've already read it. Now I'm reading it in the New Testament where okay. Jesus is referring to that. God about said, the new covenant. About the new covenant, exactly. I'm listening. Exactly. Right. Sorry, is this relating to my point that I've made or are you making a separate point? No, no, you made you made that point when you said don't come with the laws. He's not and anyone that breaks the laws. Yeah. Maybe you're talking about the I, laws. I just said that. No, but so now he's, he's saying about the, new, okay, the yeah, covenant. The last point that you made, he's referring to the first time around. The covenant. Around. The new covenant. I made a point where in prophesied in Jeremiah. You saw you read for yourself. God says, I'm gonna bring in a new covenant. It's not gonna be like the old covenant when I took you by the hand out of the land of Egypt. The wife was a husband to you and you broke that covenant. I read that, you saw it yourself, yes? You read it, yeah. Okay, so Jesus is referring to it here. And he says, this is, this is the cup of the new covenant. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. This is the, at the Last Supper. This is the new covenant in my blood. This is the new, this is the new covenant in my blood. I'm listening. Oh yeah, I'm that, that's the point, I'm making that up. You've already, read, you've already read for yourself how God says, I'm going to bring in a, a new covenant in the Old Testament, Jeremiah. You've read that for yourself. Yeah. We fast forward now when G Jesus is at, at the Last Supper. And he says, this is the new covenant in my blood. That's what Jesus is. All right? That's what it is. This is the new covenant. So all I've done is showing you in the Old Testament where God says, I'm going to bring a new covenant. And I've showed you where Jesus in the New Testament says, this is the new covenant in my blood. Can, can I ask something? What, what he read out, uh, sorry, what's your name, bro? Hamza. Hamza. What Hamza said was that, sorry, uh, what Hamza said was that, what Hamza said, what I read from what he, he said was, he's not come to abolish any... About the law. So what okay. that would say and what you're saying, I would I could only look at as a contradiction or someone's lying. Okay, so the whole There's thing, you mean, you're talking about when he said, he read the passage where somebody came to Jesus and said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? No, 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 no. The okay. part when he said he's not come to abolish yeah. the old law. He's not come to abolish the law. So he, he's solidly come and I, and with what's right. I've not come to abolish the law. But now there's a new covenant. This is the new covenant. So is there an error or is someone no, no, 
Messiah. He said, I've not come to abolish it, I've come to fulfill it. And Jesus has fulfilled it. He's fulfilled that covenant. No, in, 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 the, in the scripture, when it talks about Moses, it said it's a new covenant. If I remember correctly, I can't remember. There are two covenants. There's the old covenant with Israel, there's the old covenant with the law, mm. and keeping of the law. Yeah. Now, I've read to you in the prophecy in the Old Testament where God himself has told you he's going to bring in a new covenant. The old covenant still stands, but he's going to bring in a new covenant. Yeah, so for example, it's not going to be like the old covenant. I read that, you read it yourself, no, yes? So if, if I did. Says to me, Indeed. Yeah, so if okay, says so when Jesus comes along, he says, do not think that I've come to abolish the law. I've not come to abolish the law, I've come to fulfill the law. So he's not abolishing it, he's fulfilled it. Okay, he's completed it. He's completed it, and then he says, this is the new covenant, referring to the prophecy in the Old Testament, this is the new covenant that's in my blood. The point he made there, he, the point he made there, when the guy came to Jesus and said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Yeah, I read that, yeah. That's a Jewish man coming to Jesus. Okay. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Okay. Jesus reads the commandments. What he read. What, he's yeah. what he read out. Yeah. Okay. The new covenant hasn't come into effect yet. That's just before, that's when Jesus gets crucified. The time when that man comes to Jesus, he says, you know the law, you know the commandments. They're still under the, they're still under the old covenant. That's that. So now he's saying that you, a Gentile, must keep the law. Must keep the law of the Old Testament. I'm not a Jew. That man who came to Jesus was a Jew. He has to keep the law up until the new covenant is brought into effect. So he's saying that I have to keep it. I don't have to keep it. I keep the law by faith in Christ. And Christ has kept the law for me. That's why, do I still believe that it's, it's wrong to murder somebody? I still believe that, yes. So I'm not going to do that. Mm. But I'm saying, it's all, in order to k fulfill the, old, the covenant and all of the laws, I can never do that. Why? Because I've broken the laws. I've told a lie. Jesus said, you know, the whole thing about commandments, adultery is one of the commandments. Do, yeah. Now, shall I yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust after her, you've committed it. You're already guilty of adultery in your heart. I have broken the laws in my heart. I've broken the laws. However, Jesus has fulfilled the laws yeah. and I am saved by putting my faith in Jesus, in the blood that he shed, which is the new covenant, I am saved by faith in Christ. So you're saying the rules changed? Of course. He's saying he's brought in a new covenant. And so even though you could still say that, thou shalt not murder, still stands today, it's still breaking the commandment, but you're not saved by keeping the commandments, you're saved now by faith in Christ. Because he's the only one who kept the law. The only man, the only person in lived who lived throughout the whole of history. He's the only person. If you put your faith in him and follow him and believe in him, he's fulfilled the law for you. He'll give you a channel. With, with all due respect to him, but he's, he's actually disobeying Jesus. He's saying that the only people that, he, Jesus was the only one that kept the law and then that no one else can keep the law. But this is not what Jesus said. Jesus said clearly here, and I'll read it again. He said, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one titter shall in no wise pass from the law, till it be fulfilled. Now Jesus speaks to you. He says, Whoever, who is whoever here? It's been fulfilled. Right? Therefore shall break one of the one of these. Let's repeat again. Whoever thou shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever shall do and teach them, right? So whoever teaches them, right, shall be called the great in the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus is saying, if you break the commandments of God, Jesus didn't say, well, I mean, I heard you say that, you know, we can't keep the commandments you know but the only way you you're, if we, if the way you can achieve salvation is through the blood of Christ and believing in his death and resurrection with all due respect but Jesus didn't say that here he said whoever shall break one of these least in the commandment shall be called the least in the kingdom of God okay, and, and then is and, sorry when is it when is he speaking here when is he speaking it, irrespective it doesn't matter it does matter and I'll tell you what before the cross or after the cross this is before the cross and I'll tell you no, hold on I'll tell you explain no, hold on. explain how the Jewish man came to Jesus hold on one second I said it was before the, before the crucifixion so hang on hang on brother you finished sorry, no 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 sorry. no I haven't no I haven't oh, sorry, no. Yeah, sorry. No, no, we're going to get to sorry and then yeah. we're going to and then we're going to wrap it up fair enough no problem right look at you brother you know the book of Acts 
It's in the Old Testament, you know that? Until he died. Oh, 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 hold on, one, brother, hold on one second, one second. I'm more than happy to wrap it up after this. Look, Jesus said, right? Whoever breaks the commandments of God is called the least in the kingdom of heaven. So irrespective if whether this was before Jesus' crucifixion, this would have been an opportunity for Jesus to say that I am going to die, you should believe in my, in my death and resurrection. And when the man came to Jesus and said to him, right in Matthew chapter 19 mm -hmm. and he said how can I attain eternal life again that was before the resurrection as you argued that would have been the perfect opp opportunity for Jesus to, 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 to preach his uh, divinity to preach his theological understanding about the Trinity to preach the theological understanding about his death and resurrection this would have been a perfect opportunity to say, I'm dying in a few days' time. And he did that. Right? He did that. When he, you read the gospel, but, he did that. No, but he didn't. What he yes, said. He, did. No, but I'm, he said, I'm going to be rejected. I'm, I'm going to be, re be rejected by the elders of Israel. I'm quoting you verbatim. They're going, to, they're, going to spit, they're going to spit on me and they're going to reject, and they're going to kill the Son of Man. That, Jesus right. did that. Read the gospel. Okay. Should I read it for you? No, but hold on, but I'm quoting you verbatim. Yeah, Jesus wonderful. said. I can, I can quote it verbatim. Also. Right. Can so, I can quote yeah, it verbatim. Hold on one second. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So Jesus said, right? Right? He said, when he asked him, how can I attain, it, it, uh, attain eternal life? What was his response? In Matthew chapter we know, that, we know that he read out the commandments. We know that. There you go. But you're not so saying, therefore, I've also so said, therefore, I've also that's said, the way to Jesus, attain Jesus, eternal life, you according to, to Jesus' words. You know, need it the context. The whole of Jesus' teaching, not just take little things out of I have it. I've, I've quoted it in okay. context. I said to you that Jesus said to his disciples, he said to them that he's going to Jerusalem. He said to them that he's going to be rejected and, it, that, and that he's going to be killed. Peter then said to him, this will never happen. And Jesus said to Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. That's what Jesus said before they went to Jerusalem. So he already said that he's going to be rejected by the religious elders. But anyway, it's a good discussion. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Mm. No, What's your name? It was good. Anonymous. It was anonymous. I should come with a mask. But it was a good discussion and thank you for that. Thank you. It was a good discussion.